Hello everyone and welcome to the 2024 KMEA Allstate Tuba Audition Excerpts video for Washburn University. My name is Dr. Taylor Hicks and I am the Professor of Tuba Euphonium here at Washburn and I'll be walking through a couple of these things, kind of giving you some information about what I notice as I'm playing through it this week. First excerpt is going to be the Symphony No. 3 by James Barnes, the first movement, the solo section there. And what I think is really interesting and tricky about this is the first piece that they're working on is the fact that you're already in a cut time, half time feel. So it's really tempting to play this either way too slow or way too fast because of the half note time signature. Best way I find to work on this is to break it down into quarter notes. So instead of worrying about playing it in half time at 66, play it at the quarter note at 132. And I find it's much easier to break down. And then after you've really locked in the feel and the notes and rhythms, moving to that half time is then much easier. The other thing that is really tricky in here is making sure that we're taking care on our dotted rhythms, our dotted quarter note eighth, in order to make sure that these are staying in time. If we get off track there, it's really easy to get off center and unstuck. And then the whole excerpt winds up falling apart. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and play it for you. In both this first excerpt as well as the rest of them that come through, one of the big things for me is all about where you're breathing. Your placements of your breaths and that kind of thing are really important because they set up your success from the get-go. In Symphony Number no. 3 in particular, there's a couple of spots you might have noticed I would breathe that are not necessarily the most optimal spots normally. Normally I would like to breathe and break up a little bit of a slur, but in an audition setting, when they're looking at the preciseness of mechanics and how well you are doing the things that are on the page, sometimes you have to make suboptimal breathing choices that you wouldn't do in a performance in order to make the excerpt sound good. This next excerpt really doesn't need any help to sound good. Lincoln Chirposi is one of my favorite pieces by Percy Granger. And this from, I believe, the second movement, Rutherford Park Poachers, is a beautiful piece, but can be very tricky, especially because there's a turn in the later half of the piece. You might notice about four lines, three lines down at the last measure, there's that squiggly line. That squiggly line is a turn. We as tuba players don't usually see that, but the way you do that is a very quick A, B flat, A, and then you go on to the G. So you have a figure of ba-da-da, ba-da-da. We get to imitate the flutes and the clarinets for a little bit. The other thing here is that it's incredibly tempting, especially with the number of hairpin crescendos and decrescendos and the forte and fortissimo, to be tempted to play this incredibly loudly and bombastically, which is actually the exact opposite feeling of this piece. This piece is slow, it's beautiful, it's lush. So the fullness and the loudness comes from the richness of sound and the fullness of your sound rather than a marching band forte. Now, I'll play the first part on the upper divisi and then the second part on the lower divisi. So I'll play it twice, one for each divisi. I recommend when you are practicing for this kind of thing, learn both parts because you never know which one you'll wind up playing. So this is Lincolnshire Posey by Percy Granger, reference at Park Poachers. Thank you.
The next excerpt, Takara Martial by Ralph Vaughan Williams, or Ray Vaughan Williams, is another very bombastic, very fun piece. It's a great piece to play for the tuba. It's a nice little bit of not quite melody, but certainly a more march-like thing that we get outside of Susan and Carl King. With this, especially in the lower part, it's important that you work very slowly. Rather than trying to start right at 100 or at 90 as you're practicing, going for performance tempo right away, start at quarter note equals 50 or 60. That way, when you're working with the subdivision, you can really lock in those various different patterns and notes that otherwise wind up being very sloppy and hard to understand. When you're in an audition setting, especially a piece like Toccata Martial, having a difference between the staccato and the legato notes is huge. If they don't hear that as a judge, I know for me when I'm judging, that's an immediate red flag. Because if you've not differentiated between the two and everything is either muddy or just the same, it's a big problem. It's also not marked as any particular dynamic. So while there is some level of change that you can put in as your own artistic blend, you're not limited to piano or forte. So again, this is Takata Martial by Ray Fun Williams. It's also an opportunity to maybe experiment with some alternate fingerings. Depending on the particular instrument that you're playing, you may find that a different combination of fingerings makes those patterns, especially those turn figures, much easier. Next piece, also by Vaughn Williams, from his folk song suite, 17 Come Sunday, is one of the more popular pieces to play with wind band. This is a great excerpt because you get to play the fun part. There's a lot of whole notes and half notes, but this is the fun, more melodic section. So this is all about coming of age in this bright, sunny English countryside. And this is the chance that you do get to kind of let loose a little bit and play a little bit more bombastically. There are divisies, so again, you want to make sure that you play them both. But marcato, both in this excerpt and in any other excerpt before and after this, or any piece you play in general, if there's ever a piece of music that has a word or a term that you don't know, you want to make sure you're looking it up so that you know what it's saying. Marcato means a marked, not quite short, but energetic feeling. This is also especially important to get your breaths marked in because as you are playing louder and more energetically, you're going to use more air. So this is 17 Come Sunday. This particular one, I average it around 116 at the quarter note, given that it's not marked, unlike some of the other ones. Next excerpt is a true excerpt. It's a part from a Blazevich lyrical study. And if you've heard the name Blazevich before, you probably have heard of his technical studies, which are the much more commonly used version. But he did write a musical lyrical book, which we're seeing here. The really fun thing about this is that Andante Sostenuto is another one of those things. It's a walking speed Andante sustained. So it's sustained walking speed. So it's very pretty, very lush. It's also in D major. So D major, much like the A flat in 17 Come Sunday, are keys that are a little bit less usual for us as tuba players. And so it's important to make sure that you're really locking in those F sharps and C sharps in the D major key. Piano, much like previously when I said that forte doesn't always mean loud and bombastic, piano in this sense does not necessarily mean weak or overtly soft. Instead, 
the goal of this is to make a pretty beautiful, almost lullaby-esque sound. This particular one, I have it quarter note equals 72 to 78. That's about where the range falls in, so this should be around 76. You'll notice I added a little bit of a rollentando there at the end, just to really center it in the key and end it on a nice note. The last etude, etude number 11, is from George Koprosh, and it's a fun little piece that is a great workout if you've been working on your scales. Because these are almost all arpeggios, if you've been working on the E-flat major scale, like I know you should be because it's required as part of the audition, this should be very familiar with you, and it kind of goes through a couple of different keys that it hints at. The big thing for this is to mark your breaths, because if your breaths aren't marked, it's very easy to fall into the trap of playing and playing and playing until you run out of air. And then you either fall off the chair because you've passed out, or you just don't sound good anymore. The quarter rest right in the middle is incredibly important and should be a great chance to get at what I call a whoa breath, where you go... If you think whoa as you breathe in, it expands your whole chest cavity and your oral cavity and it helps you to get that big, full, deep breath. Also a great chance with these hairpin crescendos to really work on what you want to say as an artist rather than just playing what is on the page. So, this last excerpt, etude number 11. And for sure, watch out for the F sharps, and especially the uh, the C sharp that happens right there at the end. So as always, this has been the KMEA audition excerpt video for Washburn University. I am Dr. Taylor Hicks. I hope this has been helpful to you. If you have any questions or you want more help with this, feel free to contact me at Taylor, T-A-Y-L-O-R dot Hicks, H-I-C-K-S at washburn.edu. You can also email me if you're interested in a lesson or if you want to talk more about coming to Washburn as a student because we're definitely looking for more tuba players and we could always use more tuba and you find players. So with that, have a great practice session and a great audition cycle. Best of luck. <laughs>